charge, stop, slash. Having repelled all of Caster's spells, Saber settled the match without giving anybody a chance to stop her. The charging speed, her footwork, and her attack were perfect. Her invisible sword slashed the enemy master. A surprise attack at the perfect moment. Saber's powerful slash splits Kuzuki Surichiro in two. No, it should have split him in two. <gasps> Bewilderment causes her to gasp. What is going on? Saber, still in the posture of having swung the sword, stares at the enemy in front of her with blank amazement. No. Way. Even Saber does not understand what is going on. A perfect strike that was slashed horizontally. The attack is stopped. The sword has stopped before slashing the enemy's body, being caught between something. Leg and arm? Can such a miracle occur? Her sword has been stopped by her enemy, Kuzuki Suichiro. Knee and elbow. Her sword has been stopped, caught between his elbow and knee. Saber does not know, of course, that there is a technique to stop an enemy's blade with bare hands, and that there are experts today who actually use it. But still, she would not have stood there in astonishment if this were a normal fight. But this is the battle of a servant, and the enemy is a mere human. For him to stop an invisible sword with his bare hand, he must be insane. You underestimated me, Saber. His voice is deep, as if coming down from the ground. Saber's body moves. She tries to pull back her sword with all her might. At that instant... An unknown impact strikes her head from the back. She does not understand at all. It is her first time fighting a man that can stop a sword barehanded. Then could this attack be with his bare hands? She was punched. The back of her head was hit from such close range. She evades it, still not knowing what it is. Something goes past her temple. She understands it at is a fist strengthened by some magic, and she jumps. As she is a long weapon, she is at a disadvantage at close range against an unarmed opponent. Saber treats to short, to short range, the range where she can make use of her sword. Of course, she keeps facing her enemy while she does so. She is moving to get out of the range, advantageous, advan, advantageous, yeah, to her enemy. It is an established rule to pursue a retreating enemy, but the enemy does not pursue her. Caster's master, the man who will be defeated if he stays there, does not move and... He pierces her through her solar, pl solar plexus. She breathes out. She only feels the impact. The attack is stopped by her armor and, the, and only the impact comes to her. The impacts continue. The things aimed accurately at her vital points are human fists. Did she even have time to gasp? By the time she realized that this mountain-like that his mountain-like fingers are the cause of the impact, the match has already been decided. The fish shower down on her. The man's fists are fired in rapid succession with heaviness and intensity as if they are made of iron. She sh how could sh Fuck me. How should it be expressed? His arms are flexible like a whip, but they move in right angles. If his arms are shot out like a uh, shot out like a flash, his forearms that move from there are like the technique of a fierce god. The almost invisible attacks are all attacking her in her weak spots. He allows no counterattack. Even her arms are targeted, and the pain reaches her core even through her armor. The attacks all come from the outside to the inside. The swinging arms change direction, using the elbow as the fulcrum, and they beat Saber from impossible directions. They are sharp and dull. It is not an instant kill. 
but they contain poison that will lead to death. That is all that is contained in these attacks. Even though the fists cannot be avoided, they aren't that heavy. But the pain numbs her mind every time she receives a blow. Taking that small opening, the fist goes for the back of her head like death's scythe. She avoids it instinctively. Attacks going for her arms and body are fine, but the head, the back of the head, would prove fatal for her. Therefore, Saber concentrates on that one attack. A monster that can stop a sword with his bare hands. Facing these strange attacks that she's experiencing for the first time, the only thing she trusts are her own instincts. You were dodging well, and you were still confused, too. The enemy's arms stop moving. His stance is like his is like his arms, steady like a rock. I see. It is not your eyes that are exceptional, but your intuitions. The man moves. What is different about the attack? Saber, who was avoiding all the fatal blows, could not dodge his attack. Her mind fades. The impact landing on the back of her head shakes her brain. But she still manages to raise her hands. The man's attacks cannot penetrate through her armor. Then, the man will go for her bared head. Saber raises her arms to protect her face. The impact comes through the arms. It is like a snake crawling through a thick forest. The enemy's fists easily make their way through. Her mind fades away. The body of the snake, his left elbow, smashes into her collarbone. Saber avoids it by retreating a bit and grips her sword. The course of the fist at the course of the fist after that. She readies herself for that blow that will go for the back of her head from the left side. She cannot make light of him anymore. If the enemy is to take her consciousness, she will let him. But she will cut down his arm as compensation. She opens her eyes wide and... She is astonished at the change. With the elbow as the fulcrum, the blow comes straight down from above. The circular orbit of his attack ch changed to a straight line. She, insti she instantly moves her neck to avoid the blow going for her head. The impact lands on her shoulder. She glares at her enemy with her left shoulder destroyed, and her spine freezes up the instant she does so. The man moves back half of his body. His right hand that has not been used yet. The hand that has been placed at the height of her throat is released like a cannon. Unlike the previous attacks that followed a line, this attack is executed as a point. A thrusting fist aimed at the person in front of him. With his force and precise accuracy, he should be able to pierce through her. With his charged attack, it should be easy to pierce Saber's throat, break her bone, and smash her head to pieces. But it misses. A surprise attack is useless on her, as she has instincts bordering on precognition. The snake-like fist gazes past her neck. Seeing that, she tries to step into attack, but at that moment... BAM! An unbelievable sound comes from right beside her neck. The snake's fang pierces her. The instant it is dodged, the attack that passed her uses its fingers to dig into her neck with a sound. I don't know what Ankar is. I think that might be Caster's doing. Damn, that's brutal. The shock passes through her as a shudder. Yes, a hand is originally something used to grab, not punch. It must be supported by Caster's magic as the enemy's fingers easily squeeze off her neck. Saber's sword is raised. Her sword moves to cut off the enemy's arm before her neck is crushed. But she is unable to finish her attack. 
Before the sword is swung, her body itself is swung like a sword. She feels her body fly through the air. An overswing like a pitcher. The man holds onto Saber's neck, and he throws her with one arm. A fastball with a human as the ball. There is no way she can land safely from it. Her neck is scraped off, and she is smashed into the concrete wall at a speed of 200 kilometers per hour. Her body is forced to stop its action. Everyone watches it in astonishment. Not just me and Tosika, even Castor, who should be overwhelmed with victory, watches her master in astonishment. Saber's quick charge to Kuzuki's counterattacks. From the nightmare-like neck grab to the perfect throw that fascinated even us. Saber doesn't move. She was thrown by her neck and smashed back first into the wall. The wound on her neck should be fatal. Even worse, she hit the wall with such speed. I don't think it killed her, but I'm sure she won't be able to move. At the very least, Saber will stay on the ground until the wounds on her neck and body heal. No. Way. I murmur without realizing. Even though his fists are strengthened using Caster's magic, Kuzuki is only human. Who could possibly think that he would be able to overwhelm a servant in hand-to-hand -hand combat? It is fine to assume that the Master's role is to support the battle from the back. The lean figure turns. But there are always exceptions. There are Masters who can only fight head-on. He just proved that to us. So, their roles as the one to, f to fight and one to support are reversed. What are you doing, Caster? I told you earlier. If you are to support me, you are to eliminate the enemy's projectile weapons. The enemy, Kuzuki, stares, uh, the enemy, Kuzuki stares at Tosaka. A threat to him would not be Saber, but Tosaka, who is able to attack from a distance. That's why he won't attack us. He fully knows that letting a Magus fight a Magus would be the most sure way to a kill. What's wrong, Caster? I told you that you can do as you wish. No, I will take care of Saber. Soichiro, please take care of the Masters. Kuzuki silently nods and walks towards us. Caster faces Saber behind him. Fine. Saber was taken aback, but I already know his attacks. We just have to beat him before he gets close to us. Tosuka slowly retreats while glaring at Kuzuki. A battle between a Magus and a fighter is a fight for distance. Even though Kuzuki has monstrous fighting techniques, he has no magic resistance. Therefore, we can win if we cast something. We win if we manage to cast a spell before he reaches us. Kuzuki faces Tosuka and does not move. Caster is walking towards the wall where Saber is smashed. That action is a mistake. That's an opening I can take advantage of, so now... Well, Saber's kind of SOL and we've got a person in between us, so I can't really help her. I gotta protect Tosuka. I'll protect Tosuka. Saber isn't dead yet. Even though Kuzuki was an unexpected monster, Saber hasn't lost yet. And besides, Caster shouldn't be able to finish Saber off. I put strength into my grip. I glare at Kuzuki so as not to miss even his blinking. The instant he faces Tosuka, I slide myself in between them. Knowing Tosuka, I bet she'll jump instantly to the side to shoot Kuzuki. Oh fuck! There's no time to do so. It happens in an instant. The instant I think Kuzuki's body wavered, he is in front of Tosuka. She's astonished, but Tosuka instantly points her hand at Kuzuki. But the right hand that almost pierced Saber's neck strikes Tosuka right in her chest. Time stops for Tosuka. She's hit right in the center of her body and has her breath stopped. And that's it. As she cannot breathe, she cannot cast her spells and has most of her abilities as a magus cut off. She managed to instantly jump back so the attack only stopped her breath. But the next attack, even though she jumped back, it's only about a meter or so. Such a distance. 
It's not even considered a retreat against Kuzuki. I move in between them. Using my wooden sword as a shield, I face Kuzuki. He's about to attack Tosuka. He thrusts his fists. What? I cannot see it. How did Saper avoid such a... I desperately protect my left side. I hear a heavy sound in the sound of my wooden sword breaking. I see Kusuki getting ready for his next attack. I'll die. I feel it instinctively. My strength in wooden sword was like metal. If he can destroy it in one blow, he can destroy any part of my body. Yeah, no shit, he took down a servant. I can't stop him. Tosca is coughing painfully behind me. I can't see his attacks and my only weapon was destroyed. His fist accurately goes for my temple. Emi Ashiro will die from that hammer-like attack. Having my head smashed off, I would probably splatter a rain of blood and brains. I'll die if I don't stop it. A weapon. I can't match him. I need a strong weapon to make up for the vast difference in our powers. It closes in on my brain. I imagine myself dying. No. If that happens... I'll die if I can't stop it. A weapon. I need a weapon. A weapon that he can't destroy. Not a quickly furnished weapon like a wooden sword, but a proven strong weapon. The finest quality at that. A weapon undeserved by me. Yes, the weapon he carries would probably be... Trace. Oh. Trace. On. Then I'll make it. I'll make it even if it's impossible. I'll make it no matter what the consequences may be. I'll make myself believe that strengthening and reproduction, things that already exist and things that do not already exist, are similar. That's right. There's no time to think. Fake it or fake it no matter what. It does not matter if something gets destroyed in the process. I don't care even if it's just a fake. Hurry. Forget everything. Don't I know that I'm the only one who will be killed? Uh... Don't I know that I'm not the only one who will be killed? If I can't stop it, Tosuka will. Huh? No way. That spectacle. Tosuka speaks out for me. A deep voice. Is that Kuzuki's voice? Something might have happened to my ears as I can't hear properly. No, not only my ears, but the sense of my limbs are too weak. Only my right eye is functioning. I watch the approaching fist. I observe as someone else's action blocks that attack. My arms are about to rip off. Even though I have no feeling, I hear my nerves tearing off. In my, an in my hands are his twin swords. Yang sword, Kansho, and Yin sword, Bakuya. The names of the swords. Even though they're haphazardly reproduced, the swords still represent their existence to the wielder. But I'm sorry. I can't project you guys perfectly with my skills. We spring apart. The twin swords that parried 30 attacks breaks as if saying they cannot take any more. It's not because they lost against Kuzuki's fists. The swords disappeared because I couldn't maintain their image. The twin swords must have been unexpected as Kuzuki shows hesitation for the first time. Then... A strong wind is created in the intersection. I look toward the wall. Saber must have healed as she is standing up. Caster is backing away from her. Yes, that's why it was a mistake. Even though she was defeated, Saber still had her powers. So there's no way Saber, who has powerful magic resistance, could be cornered by Caster. It is Kuzuki's role to finish Saber off. But Caster made a mistake. She must have been planning something, but that extra thinking caused her to lose out on her perfect chance. Kuzuki retreats. He stands as if to protect Caster in. This is it. We'll retreat, Caster. He makes a precise decision. Master? No. Saber is hurt. You should be able to defeat her again. She is not someone who would fall for it twice. It is I who underestimated her. I should have attacked her one more time. Kusuki is right. Saber was cornered because Kusuki's techniques were, uh, were too odd. But that's only up to now. 
I can't cope with it no matter how many times I receive them, but Saber is already used to the attacks. The main point of a tactic is not to have a constant, concrete shape. Even though they are strong, Kuzuki's attacks are too odd, so they are easily seen through. Therefore, they must be fatal on the first strike. That is the difference between a technique that is trained to an art and an action that is trained to the utmost limits. I understand, Soichiro. Yes, a servant should obey its master. Who was that directed at? Caster's robe flutters as she finishes. There's nothing after that. The bluish-purple robe circles Kuzuki, and as if through sorcery, they disappear without a trace. I mean, it probably was sorcery, but you know.